baseball's bat sign that's predicting the prevalence of intraoperative floppy iris syndrome in patients on tamsulosin. Uh, now, what we all know is that benign prostatic hyperplasia is a very common disorder in elderly males, and treatment of the same is usually with an alpha blocker, using the, namely tamsulosin, which relaxes the smooth muscle in these patients. But what happens as a side effect of the same is that the receptors which are present on the dilator pupillae are also acted upon. And hence, you develop something which is known as IFIS, that is intraoperative floppy iris syndrome. Now, like Dr. David Chang had correctly, uh, has already published this data long back, that you have insufficient pupillary dilation, you have undulated and billowing of the iris, iris prolapsing into the wounds, and intraoperative pupillary constriction. So, what, uh, what was known was that there is IFIS, but IFIS does not occur in all cases in patients on tamsulosin. So what our study was performed was to see that is there a method to predict that which, which patients would develop IFIS if they are on tamsulosin. So the materials and methods of the study, it's a case control study. Sample size was 76 eyes uh, in the test group, that is in patients on tamsulosin for more than three months, and a control group where patients were not on tamsulosin. Inclusion criteria was age above 55 years, male patients, and exclusion criteria was patients using other drugs for BPH, glaucomatous patients, complicated cataracts, and any condition that could alter the iris morphology. Uh, we did a preoperative cataract assessment, and besides the normal routine cataract things, we also checked the undilated, we did an undilated anterior segment OCT, and an infrared pupillometry too. Now what did we do is that we assess the iris pattern and assess the pupillary diameter under both photopic and scotopic lighting. Uh, in iris measurements, so here we see this is the scleral spur, the pupillary margin. Uh, the, the central area, half the distance between the two is the area where the dilator muscle receptors are and 0.75 millimeters from the pupillary margin is where the sphincter muscle uh, receptors are. Um, so what we did is also we did a pupil measurement that is in the photopic pupil, uh, we did a photopic and a scotopic pupil measurement. Uh, now inf we, we noted the incidence of IFIS intraoperatively when these patients were operated. Now what our results were, the age, it was in a test group was average 62.4, control group 61.9, not significant. Uh, the iris measurements. Now here we saw that in the test group, that is patients on tamsulosin, there was a significant decrease in the dilator muscle receptor group, uh, dilator muscle receptor thickness as compared to the, uh, in the control group. There was a significant difference between that. There was no significant difference between in the sphincter muscle region group and therefore the DMRT versus the SMRT ratio was also significantly altered. So here we see, this is a photo of the same, as, as compared to the control group, we see that here we see that both the dilator and the sphincter muscle region is almost equal in size. Whereas in the test group, we can clearly note that in the, di uh, the dilator muscle receptor thickness is lesser than the sphincter muscle receptor thickness. This is multiple patients demonstrating the same photo uh, anterior segment OCTs. Now, because of the striking resemblance of this iris pat, uh, of the iris of patients on tamsulosin to a baseball bat, we coined the term baseball bat sign. Uh, then we did the pupil measurements in that we saw that patients on tamsulosin had, had smaller pupils, photopic pupil sizes, smaller scotopic pupil sizes, and therefore a smaller ratio between the two two. Now, uh, how many patients actually de developed IFIS? Uh, no patients in the control group developed IFIS at all. In the test group, that is patients on tamsulosin, 62 out of 76 patients developed the signs of IFIS. That is 81.5%. So we found out that the use of a baseball sign, that is thinning of the DMR, things, uh, DMR thickness of the iris on the anterior segment OCT is a very reliable tool to detect occurrence of IFIS in patients on tamsulosin. Our study uses anterior segment OCT for predicting the occurrence of iris. It is the first study to demonstrate thinning of I iris DMR thickness in patients on tamsulosin, and hence we coined the term baseball sign for that. And it also demonstrated that inadequate pupillary dilation in patients on tamsulosin using infrared pupillometry. Now, how do we translate this to our clinics? We would be better if we know prehand that the patient is going to develop iris. We can be better prepared to tackle IFIS intraoperatively by creation of longer wounds, controlled hydrodissection, avoid overfilling the chamber with viscoelastic, decompressing the anterior chamber periodically, and using a low flow phaco while operating. Uh, the futuristic approach to overcome the limitations of our study is to find a method how to correlate the iris measurements with the anterior segment o OCT. Uh, the, so that would represent the real iris thickness. 
and if we could do a human cadaveric study to corroborate the iris dilator muscle region uh, smooth muscle tone deficiency in patients on tamsulosin. Thank you. Excellent. Very good. And you devised a new sign, baseball bat sign. And I think what you said about usefulness of this study uh, in clinical practice, that is very important. Yes. Because just finding out that there is a probability of getting floppy iris will not help. But if you can uh, you know, predict it and you are better prepared, the surgeon is mentally prepared that this could happen, and then you will perform the surgery accordingly. So good, good job. Um, I'm one question. Um, the paper was excellent, actually. Um, do you have 85% incidence of IFIS in times loss in patients these days? Do you come across yes. IFIS, 85% in patients on times loss in these days? Do you get, yes. because we modify everything, we use a dispersive OVD right. to cover the iris, so we, we use low flow parameters, but still, you, did you get IFIS? No. Is that so? lesser low flow parameters. So the risk of IFIS, that means the iris popping out from the wounds and all becomes much lesser nowadays by using, by taking the precautions. But steps. if it, it is going to occur still yes. in spite yes, of yes, yes, all yes. the precautions Correct. that you take the because the iris is floppy. Yes. So it is going to occur. So yes. how do you tackle that? That is also important. You know, right. just being theoretical doesn't work. Yes. It has to be practical also. Yes. So how did you all handle it when you got these cases? Uh, so the main starts popping out, the first thing is to decompress the anterior chamber, that's very important to reduce the pressure inside. So by uh, by uh, depositing the iris after decompressing the anterior chamber, pushing, if, you're, if it's done when the lens is in there, uh, in the bag, you push you push the lens downwards. Do not try to overfill the chamber with viscoelastic because that's not going to help. It's going to increase the pressure. So you decompress the anterior chamber, bring out all the excessive fluid, the viscoelastic, and then carefully reposit the iris back from the wounds. Uh, into the position and proceed with surgery. But it's going to pop out again in any case. No, no, have you used That's any time uh, expand, expansion expand device? Yes, so in, in patients where preoperatively the patients uh, had very small uh, pupil, which was less than 4 millimeters, we did use either uh, things like iris hooks or in pupil expander to conduct the surgery. Which one? Uh, the V-hex uh, okay. pupil expander. Yeah. And in drop, if you have uh, a similar situation, people coming in yeah. and if is. Do you use uh, an intraoperative uh, midway uh, iris in, uh, hook insertion? Uh, so if, if, if it becomes difficult for uh, during surgery that the iris is com constantly popping out and the pupillary area where you get to operate is very minimal, then in that case intraoperatively sometimes iris hooks can be used to food so that you get better access to the uh, lens. Any higher molecular weight? <coughs> yes, so you could use high, uh, things like viscose, which is a higher molecular weight, to cause pupillary dilation first. Uh, you could also use a stretch pupilloplasty where you could stretch the pupil using a, uh, using a Y hook so that the pupillary area is increased. But no, I think it is contraindicated in IFIS, remember. You should not do it. Only high viscosity not viscoelastic and uh, pupil expanders. Okay, I think pupil expander or high viscoelastic. Yeah. We'll go to the